Mama he says she had chocolate mousse for dinner last night. That is a, a one-page comic, I suppose, from a great book, Fred Gwynn's A Chocolate Mousse for Dinner. Um, I've always enjoyed that book, sharing it with my students. I encourage them to create language comics for their writer's notebooks, especially those who like to be visual. And so uh, this video is about how to make two types of language comics, homophone comics and homograph comics. But uh, before we go into them, a word about visuals. Um, we do 10 minutes of sacred writing time in my class. It is not sacred drawing time. I do not want to see my students drawing their comics during sacred writing time. They should be planning the writing that would help their uh, comics in the long run. Um, my students, if they want to add the visuals, they find time at the end of class to come back to their writer's notebook or they take them home and they add visuals. But during sacred writing time, we are writing and I think that's important to know. If you want visuals, um, I have no problem with them as long as they're very clever with language. And that is what a homophone and a homograph comic are based on that concept. And so, first of all, the word homophone uh, comes from the two Greek roots, same sound. It's two words um, that are spelled um, differently but have the same sound, like B and B, and maybe you even have an Aunt B if your name is Opie or Andy Griffith, uh, and then uh, Flower and Flower. Um, my friend, author, and author um, David Michael Slater has a book called Flower Girl, and it's based on that homophone. And then uh, Since, Since, and Since have always been good homophones. Uh, two, two, and two, simple um, homophones. That's what a homophone is. It's spelled differently, but it's pronounced the same. Uh, and then there are homographs, and they come from the Greek roots for same and written. Graph as in telegraph, or autograph is the written form of something. Um, it's two words that are spelled exactly the same, but they have different meanings. It could also be three words, I suppose, two or more words. Two homographs um, can be pronounced the same, like down, like feather down, and then down, like the direction. Um, but they can also be pronounced differently, like if you're talking about bass, the fish, and bass, the kind of guitar, then you are uh, still in a homograph because they're spelled the same. Um, the pronouncing them the same or different is, is optional. And some examples I've always liked are like the words bat, like a bat that flies and a bat that a uh, baseball player uses as a good homograph. Evening is a great one because if you are evening things out, like a score or treatment of something, um, but you can be doing it in the evening. And so two different meanings, evening. Um, and then wound is uh, past tense for want wind, which also could be wind, which wind and wine are homographs too, um, but wound and wound um, are two uh, homographs. There's an example of ones that are pronounced differently from each other, but they're spelled the same. And so the idea of a homophone comic is spend some time writing some homophones. This is what I do during sacred writing time. I say, today I'm going to brainstorm homophones. Um, here's a list I came up with in eight minutes because I like homon homonyms. Aunt B might get stung by a bee. No matter how hard you grind this fragrant flower, you will never produce any flower. Now, as I write these, I think, could I provide a little visual, maybe hand-drawn or on the computer? Because that's what would turn these into a comic if I had. Uh, this, this sort of serves as the caption. Since he didn't have two cents to his name after winning the lottery, we decided he didn't have much sense. And so, could I draw a picture that that could serve as the caption for? Ding! I have just created a homophone comic. It's a line, like my wristwatch says it's 2 to 2 2, and an illustration or a visual that helps you um, enjoy the cleverness of that writing. The bald man balled up his fists and bawled like a baby on the subway. That's something I could probably draw a little picture of and I could make a nice homophone comic out of it. I call that one, alright? Um, we had to bail Bale out of jail with a bale of hay because he didn't have any cash. I did actually know someone named Bale growing up and so Bale is a man's name. And then uh, here's one. After vacation, my teacher made me write a summary, summary of all the things I did. And you know what? Um, that's the one I actually decided to go with. But uh, one more. If we add up the money that they made from the ad, I think they'd see the ad was bad. That almost sounds like Dr. Seuss. I don't know how I'd draw a picture to represent that, but I bet I could if I really thought so. Anyway, I said number seven kind of 
grabbed my fancy the most. And so, this is my very first homophone comic. And uh, please notice, there's a caption at the bottom. In September, my teacher made me write a summary summary. There's my homophone. Um, I do have a, some words in the comic. You can see I'm a terrible artist. I use Mr. Stick and have no problem drawing Mr. Stick. For some reason, that Mr. Stick with a little goatee and a... Um, graduation cap on his hat head that represents the teacher and then there's someone sitting out in the audience that's not much of a drawing but I'm not much of an artist however I thought my comic was fairly clever it's the very first one I put in my notebook I liked it enough it actually um, ended up being one of four that I ended up on a page together over time I added these that's what I like to do in my notebook sometimes is I like to just say oh here's a cool idea homophone comics and I'll divide the page into four and then over time I'll keep coming back and adding them these are the four that ultimately got added um, sometimes though I just create them in the corners of a page and then that's all that's in that corner of that page and then I write around them completely different topics. They're nice to be used that way. Um, you should surprise yourself with your homophone comics, because two, 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 there, 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 those are simple ones, and everyone can do something with those, I bet. Challenge yourself to surprise yourself. Here's one that I came up with that surprised me. Um, my wife and I were walking our neighborhood, and she looked at a little grouping of trees, and she called it the cops of trees. And I hadn't heard that word before. I said, what, what is that? And she told me, and I asked her to spell it, and I realized that it was spelled with an E, um, not an, without the E, like I was thinking, and I realized, oh, there's a homo homophone. Um, and I came up with the sentence that uh, they hid themselves from the suspect, the cops hid behind, behind a copse of trees. Simple little illustration. Um, I learned a new word that day by putting it into a homophone comic. And here's one that one of my students did. Kind of more of a two-panel comic here. Um, Hannah, my student, did this, and uh, she was clever in that she used two homophones. The bass player be, uh, became the bass of the band. Later, they were banned from the city. And please notice with both of those, um, a little care went into them. We both did that. And the reason why we did that is we were proud of the cleverness we showed with the language. And then we were willing for to draw someone's eyes' attentions into that cleverness. We both provided something that's you know, not amazing artistically, but at least draws you in. And so homophone comics, that's one challenge I have for my students. Um, I challenge you as well if you're keeping a writer's notebook. They, they, they do nice things for your notebook. Let's talk about homographs, though. Homographs are the other type of comic I'm pushing. This is uh, step one is you got to write some clever homographs. Remember, they're the words that uh, they're spelled exactly the same, but they have two different meanings. And so if you saw... Um, a sensational headline, like a sensational news headline, while in the checkout, that, that made you feel good and it made you feel sensational. There's two different words, uh, two different um, meanings of sensational going on in that particular sentence. Same thing in this sentence. We entered, we encountered two stand-up comics, reading the newspaper comics, comics and comics, two different nouns um, being talked about there. If you want to see Bart's dad tear up, just tear up his favorite baseball card. This fourth one as well, object and object. Um, these are the ones that are perhaps pronounced differently. That's okay in a homograph as long as they're spelled the same. And then uh, here I am playing with the one I like. When the light started evening out, I knew evening had begun. That's just a cool sentence. I don't know how I'd illustrate that one, so that's probably not going to be my choice for a homograph comic. And then uh, I liked this one because it had three. After we paid the fine, everything seemed fine, but we walked a fine line for the rest of the time. We stayed in that one horse down. And this was the one that I knew my wife would never be able to pronounce right. Serum number, number four made my leg feel number than three did. And the first one is supposed to be number, like four. And the second one is supposed to be numb, like what your legs and hands can do when they're cold. But number, then three. And I knew by putting three after it, my wife would never be able to pronounce this sentence right the first time, the second time, or probably even the third time. And she, I was correct. And so um, this actually became my favorite of my homograph sentences that I as you can see, as evidenced by the comic strip that I have drawn of it. And again, I prefer one-panel comic strips. They can be two, they can be three. Here is, it says a uh, homophone comic there, and that is a mistake. This is actually a homograph comic. Serum number f number four made my leg feel number than three. And uh, your notebook can contain drawings as long as the writing that surrounds it, I always think, is smart. Here is an example of smart 
drawing. What I do, like I said before, is I sometimes set up whole pages and say, I like that idea, but I don't necessarily write them all on the same day or at the same time. I come back to the page. You can see here I have one more homograph comic that I am working on. And then uh, the other thing I like to do, like I just did with this new one, is sometimes I like to go three or four pages ahead in my notebook when I have an idea for one, and I put it um, in the corner of one of my pages. Um, in a week or so, I'm going to get to that page. I'm probably not going to write what that comic is about on the rest of that page. I'll probably write about whatever's going on that day during my sacred writing time. That's uh, that, that comic is there to just be a clever illustration in my writer's notebook. That's why my, why my notebook is interesting to flip back through because I have all sorts of reasons to stop and look at small decorations and celebrations of language that I have done. That's what I encourage my students to do. And that's why I encourage homophone and homograph comics. You want your notebook to be the one when you're looking back, you stop and you uh, look back at those things that you remark to yourself, well, I was being pretty smart with language or cleverness that particular day. Hey, um, this video and many other resources related to homophone and homograph comics can be found online at the Always Right website, which is CorbettHarrison.com, two T's, two R's. Um, you can also just go to Google and spell Corbett Harrison with two T's, two R's, and then just type in some other words like homophone comics or homograph comics or language comics, um, and that will help you find uh, our site. We uh, enjoy hosting good ideas for teachers because we want our students to be keep, keep, keeping great writer's notebooks. It's time our students claimed their voices back and uh, these formatted essays that we teach them to write for state tests, they're killing our students' voices. And I can think of no better way, and I see no better way, to bring voice back to my classroom than to have my students celebrate their words and their ideas and their writer's notebooks. Hey, keep them writing. That's the important thing. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks.